Hi, this is Russell Stunner from teachertrainingvideos.com. Today's video is about perhaps one of the most important technologies in education at the moment. It's everywhere. It's in all the blended learning courses, all the flipped learning courses that you see, all the online courses that you see. They're all using this technology. It's called screen capture technology. And we're going to focus on the one that I particularly like, which is Snagit 2020. I'm going to take you through five great examples of how we can use Snagit in education. If you're a teacher and you watch these videos almost straight from the start, you'll realize, ah, so that is the technology that is producing all that content. So I'm going to show you five lovely examples. I really hope you find this video useful. We'll get straight into it. And as always, please like the video, please share the video, please comment on the video and uh, please join my channel. So in this first example, I'm gonna turn off the webcam and you'll see why in a minute. Let's imagine that you're a teacher and you want to record yourself, perhaps doing a PowerPoint presentation or talking over some grammar or presenting some pictures. One of the things that you can do with screen capture technology is that you can record yourself talking over a PowerPoint slide. It will record your voice. It will also in allow you to introduce yourself on your webcam and then to talk over the PowerPoint slides and everything will come out. And then you can of course put that onto your blended learning course or your fully online course or your flipped learning course. So if we, for example, open up Snagit and what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the capture button here. And then simply all we need to do is once the capture button opens, is make sure we check, click on video. And we can do quite something interesting as well. We can actually start with the webcam on. So we can start by introducing ourselves and then go to recording the, the actual screen. So for example, if I click around here and then just mark out that area, and then as you'll see on in a minute, the webcam will come on first. So I could start by doing a quick introduction. introduction. I'll just click on this button here and I can start talking. Hi, this is Russell Stanard, and today we're going to do a presentation about the use of technology in assessment. I can then just click on the uh, pause button, and then what I can do is I can jump in now and just switch over so that now we're talking about the slides. So I could start talking about the slides. Uh, so today we're going to look on the impact of technology, or particularly on the area of assessment. My name is Russell Stanard from teachertrainingvideos.com. Click on pause, come to the next slide. Uh, just to give you a little bit of information about my teaching career, blah, 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 blah. Then click on the next slide. And see all of that comes out in a video. Blah, 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 blah. So I've talked about one, two, three slides. Let's stop that whole recording and we can play that back. Hi, this is Russell Stanard and today we're gonna to do a presentation about the use of technology in assessment. I can end this. Uh, so today we're going to look on the impact of technology, or particularly on the area of assessment. My name is Russell Stanard from teachertrainingvideos.com. Just to give you a little bit of information about my teaching career. So you can see that I can just talk through the slides and my voice is included. And then the great thing about that is that then I could share that in all different ways. I could upload that onto YouTube. I could just save that on my computer and then upload it. So I can click on save as, for example, and just save that onto my desktop, uh, Snagit five examples video, and then sim simply click on save. And now that video, if we come onto the desktop, and there is that video, we can just click on it and it will play straight away. Hi, this is Russell Stanard, and today we're gonna do a presentation. Notice that I don't even have to go full screen. It really doesn't make any difference. If you remember when I did the recording there, I only simply opened up and worked, sorry, with the wrong one there, worked with this area here, but it was enough. When you actually play the video back, it's a lot bigger. So that's one obvious example of how you could use screen capture, because if you want to record yourself talking over a video or over some pictures, uh, we could do the same thing with pictures as well. Now, this second example, I think it's going to really interest a lot of teachers. A lot of us want to produce learning assets where perhaps we're talking over pictures, perhaps it's talking over some maps or perhaps it's talking over some architectural pictures. Uh, I'm going to do an example in history. So I've got three images here. If I just click on the first one, we've got Henry VIII, that's Jane Seymour, and then that is Elizabeth I. So these are all Tudors or connected to the Tudor dynasty. So I'm going to click now on screen capture. 
Notice that I don't need to go full screen. This is always a mistake that teachers make. When you play that video back, it's still gonna be really big. So let's imagine now that I wanna sort of produce a very quick learning video where I'm talking about these tutors. So I'm gonna click here and say, Okay, so this is a picture of Henry VIII. Henry VIII is famous because he married six times, but also because he broke with the Catholic Church and formed the Church of England. Here we have a picture of Jane Seymour. Jane Seymour was one of the wives of Henry VIII. And here we have a picture of Elizabeth I. Elizabeth I was actually the daughter of Henry VIII and Henry's second wife, Anne Boleyn. I'll just stop that there. But you get the idea that I can be moving through the uh, pictures and talking about more than one picture at the same time. Okay, so this is a picture of Henry VIII. Henry VIII is famous because he... Okay, so we've got the video, and of course we can play, go through. We've got three examples. Now I'm going to just save that video. So I'm going to click on Save As. I'm going to save that onto my desktop, and then I'm going to open it up and play it back to you, and you'll see how big it is. So we call this Tudor video. Three since there were three people uh, that I spoke about in the video. Now I'm gonna quickly jump to my desk. So here I am on my desktop, I've got the video here, I'm gonna click on that video. Okay, so this and is- And you can notice, and see it's lovely and big, it doesn't come out small when you play it back in MP4. So keep that in mind, and just, you know, absolute quick way of producing learning content. And of course I could have shared that on YouTube as well, and just shared the link. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is if you're going to work with pictures, make sure that the pictures that you use are pictures that you can legally use if you decide to put something on to um, YouTube. Very quickly, I'm just going to give you a tip. So if you, for, I searched for on Google Tudors, but then I went to the tools and I chose labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification so that I know that I can actually reuse these video images and modify them and these are the pictures that come up. So it's a good idea to use that little button when you're working uh, with videos that you're going to put onto YouTube if you're going to make them public, okay, just to make sure that uh, you are using pictures that people have legally given you permission to make use of. One really important thing about Snagit is the way that we can distribute the videos. If we click here we've already seen that we can save the videos and save them onto our computer but if we click here notice that I could save the videos into my Google Drive or put them into my Dropbox in fact one of the things that I do is I put them onto YouTube I can click and simply add a video up straight into YouTube now I'm already connected to my YouTube account and to do that all I needed to do was to put in my Gmail account and my password now if I wanted to put this video straight up onto uh, my YouTube account and then share the link with the students. All I need to do is you do need to put in at least a title, a description and one tag. Uh, we can set it to unlisted which means that nobody can find this video by searching it in YouTube. They can simply only access the video if they have the link. So that's really good if you want to keep it private. And this is the really useful button. And notice it says copy to clipboard. So what's going to happen is when this video is sent up to YouTube, automatically it's going to copy the address of the link to the video into my clipboard as if I've kind of selected it and copied it. It's automatic. So if I upload that video, you'll see that the video has been uploaded there and I can see it's actually been uploaded and it literally just takes a few seconds. So the video is now uploaded. And if I was to open up, say, a browser like Google Chrome, so we got Google Chrome on the screen. Remember that I told you that it's automatically saved the link to the video into my clipboard. So if I right click and click on paste, you see that that video actually is already there. I didn't need to save it or copy it and then save it. It simply is automatic. And if I click on enter, there is the video. Testing, testing, one, okay, two, so you can see how easily I can basically take a video and upload it directly into my YouTube account. And this is something that I do all the time. And I set the videos as unlisted so that only people who have the link can actually watch the video. One thing that I use Snagit for a lot is giving feedback to students on their work. And it was actually this idea that helped me to win some of the awards that I've got. Um, if I, for example, again, I let's imagine that this is a student's work, okay? It, this is actually just a, an article that I, I wrote about screen capture technology. But let's just imagine that this is a student's work and I'm reading through the work and I notice 
um, that um, there's a few things I'm, I need to kind of talk about. So let's say there's a bit of a problem here, and maybe there's a bit of a problem, say, um, here, and then perhaps there's a bit of a problem. Uh, let's imagine there's another problem here. Let's just keep it very simple, okay? So you've read the student's work, and you've noted three things that you want to talk about. Then you can open up the screen capture technology, go to the capture button, and this time, again, you, you don't have to mark full screen as you've seen it doesn't it's not that important and you can then start the video again we won't start with me in fact what we can do and I'll just show you this when you make a recording you can just turn the webcam off and then it doesn't come on at all so if I just click on the button again mark the area and now what I'm going to do is just start recording let's imagine that the students called Tony Hi Tony, just want to give you some feedback on your work. Uh, the first thing here, you mentioned that uh, it also records your voice too. Can you just explain very quickly how uh, the screen capture technology uh, records your voice because you're not making that very clear. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to scroll down to the next point. Yeah, let's imagine it's this one here. Uh, Tony, the other thing is, can you explain uh, how you put the videos online? So once you've made a recording, how do you actually upload those videos onto YouTube? And then I come down to the next one, yeah? Um, can you just give us a bit more information about the sort of things that you can present using uh, screen capture technology? Blah, 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 blah. So I could carry on giving feedback on, on the work. I then click on stop. I've now got literally like a live recording of me giving feedback to the student. Hi Tony, just want to give you some feedback on your... And of course the video just goes through. Now what can I do with that video? Well I could, I mean, save that onto my t onto my computer and then upload it onto Moodle if I can want to give the feedback to the student on Moodle or I want to give the feedback to the student perhaps on their Edmodel site or I could upload it to YouTube and set it as private and then just send the student the link and that's actually what I do a lot so I would normally just click on share click on YouTube send that feedback to Tony now, I'm doing this literally every day with all this particularly with my online students so Tony feedback sorry and let's just copy that and paste that in and paste that in so and then upload it and it's going to automatically remember once the video is uploaded it's going to automatically send me the link to the video uh, remember it's just like as if you copy something it's, it's, it's almost as if I sort of click and copy something and then click on it and right click and copy it remember you can do that well as soon as the video is sent to you if we now just click on and open up a new page and again I'm just gonna paste you'll see that that video is already up onto YouTube now hi and Tony just want to give you some feedback on your work so it's another great way that you can work with screen capture technology the next example I want to show you is actually where I'm not going to use video I'm going to use image we can also capture images using screen capture technology using Snagit so I'm going to click on the image and I'm going to just basically image capture this picture so I'm just going to mark out the area there that will do that will do absolutely fine and that can bring that image in now what I'm going to do is with this image now is I'm going to click on this button here and go to steps and I'm going to mark various things on this screen so we're going to say that's going to be the boot of the car it's going to be the door it's going to be the windscreen that's going to be the wheel it's going to be the headlight that's going to be the grill um, what else could we do ah, that should do it let's do this one here window screen wipers for example so let's just click on that so I've got all these different things that I've numbered in the picture and all I did to do that was just to click and go to steps and now all I'm going to do is click on this button here copy all now I'm going to paste that image now with with the numbers included into a document so we've got this document here on the screen I'm just going to paste that image in remember I click copied it so I'm just going to paste it in and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put say down here name these parts of the car I'm going to put number one number two number three number four number five 
and really simply, oh, it's actually I did more than no, I did seven things, sorry. Now I, I've, I've literally kind of created some sort of worksheet uh, where the students could be really good for language learning, for example, uh, where I've got the students to, to name these objects on the screen. And you can see how quickly I did that. Now, Snagit has hundreds of these little tools. I'm going to show you another example in a minute, but loads of different tools that we can use to kind of take an image and then add to it and highlight it and even write text on it if we want to. So we're not limited to just, um, you know, adding numbers. We can write on the screen and do all sorts as well. So it's a great kind of editing tool as well. But I'm going to show you a couple of really interesting examples now of how we can use Snagit image capture. Now I'm going to highlight one of the new features in Snagit, which is the 2020 version, and I love it. It's this ability to produce leaflets and handouts. Now I have to confess I haven't used this yet. Uh, I will be using it in a couple of weeks when I go out to Turkey to do some work. Uh, but it really is useful and it's super quick and I've been playing around with it and it's just lovely. The first thing I'm going to do for, do for this example is just I'm going to just open up and import uh, from my images three pictures of different places in London okay and now all I need to do is to come to create and we're going to image from template and we'll choose one with three images and some place to write the text I'm going to click on this I'm going to call this one London at the top and I can put a subtitle if I want here and I'll say my favorite three places for example now this could be anything I'm doing an example here with um, working with uh, images of London but this could be again geography history it could be all sorts of things languages uh, information I'm just going to simply drag the pictures in so that would be that big Ben that one's going to be uh, for uh, the London I sorry did that wrong just drag that in there and then this last one click on it that's going to be Again, sorry, clicking on it there, just drag it. That's it, all you need to do. Now, I'm just gonna add a caption. Now, I could write any information I wanted to here about Big Ben, so this could be like a, an information leaflet with some information about Big Ben underneath it, and then maybe I'm gonna to have to do the same one here. I'm gonna have the London Eye, and again, I could then do some information, and of course, I can use the fonts here to put a nice title on everything, and we're gonna put here Tower, well, that's actually Tower Bridge, so Tower Bridge. And you can see, again, how quickly I can make a nice handout. Um, so, for example, if I'm doing a presentation in Turkey and I want to highlight the technologies that I'm going to be talking about in my presentation, then I can obviously put in quick images of the uh, technologies and then some information here. This could be maps with some information. So this could be used in loads of different ways. And, of course, then you just save it and print it out. So I love this feature. And if you click on Create, and I went from Images uh, from Template, you'll see that there's absolutely masses of these options so you can play around with all these different ones and make use of them something that as i said i haven't used it yet but definitely going to be using it this is going to save me a lot of time and i love this feature Okay, really hope you like that video. If you come to teachertrainingvideos.com, there's a special section on Snagit with lots more videos about Snagit, including the latest Snagit 2020. And also look out for my course. I do have an offer to buy Snagit and to get a course along with that that literally takes you through everything in Snagit. Um, if you'd like to follow my work, keep up with all my videos, my blog, my webinars, my online courses, etc., then the best thing that you can do is to sign up to the newsletter and that way you'll be updated with everything. The other thing that you can do is to join me on my YouTube channel. I think we've nearly reached now about 10,000 subscribers, so that's doing pretty well. And if you're looking for any training, and that can either be me coming over to your organization and doing a workshop or doing a, a presentation, or for example, if you want uh, to do that online, I have a great virtual classroom, one-to-many or one-to-one, -one, then please contact me as I do run those types of courses. And thank you very much.